Hello and welcome to Pilot Light's first webinar, which we are doing as part of Digital Leaders Week. I'm Gillian Murray, Pilot Light's Chief Executive, and with me are Caroline Fry and Mike Smith, two of Pilot Light's project managers. Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> well, if you, we'll just wait a few moments um, and see we've got quite a few joined already actually. So thanks everyone, welcome. So I'm leading off with a brief introduction to the today's webinar because while there are a number of facets to digital and our digital journey, which Caroline and Mike will talk about, I believe leadership and strategy are key. That is, considering the strategic objectives of the charity through the lens of digital and asking the question, how can digital enable us to better fulfill our mission? So some brief context, Pilot Light's mission is to help charities help more people more effectively. And we do this by using the skills of business members. So our key external stakeholders are charities, companies, and business professionals. Our current strategic objectives, and Caroline will speak to this later, are innovating our offer, increasing our reach, and collaborating for impact. So part of our um, digital journey is considering how better we can meet these objectives. Um, so we formed a digital working group here at Pilot Line. It was made up of um, us, um, as well as um, a trustee and an external stakeholder. Um, and initially kind of getting started um, was a little bit tricky. Uh, we were kind of thinking about the, way, the best way to sort of approach what, um, how we wanted to kind of take forward this work. Um, and we agreed to, to kind of put it into three different brackets, uh, culture, uh, technology, data, um, and strategy, which um, Caroline and I will speak to uh, over the course of this presentation. Um, but since we kind of realised that actually trying to really get into the strategic piece um, right at the beginning would be quite tricky, we thought, Okay, well, we'll think about culture and data because those are the things that we can kind of really grapple with um, in terms of our people uh, initially. And um, so we, we kind of worked around that way. Okay. Okay. So um, this is Caroline here. So I'm going to talk first of all um, about culture. So um, as Gillian outlined earlier on, um, and like so many aspects of running a business or running an organisation in any sector, um, it's crucial to get the um, the entire organisation on board when you're, when you're thinking of working differently. Um, and really with digital, this is just to outline that it, it isn't just a kind of one-man show. Um, getting digital embedded into all aspects of the organisation. So this is from the top down, from Gillian's level downwards, but also from bottom up as well. It's making sure that um, digital is completely embedded into the organisational culture. So how have we been working through this? Um, so the first um, step and what felt like the most obvious step for us to take was um, to carry out a skills audit and I feel like I've done quite a few different training courses where um, this has been recommended but not really been explained actually just how we do it and what it is so I thought it'd be good to explain in a little bit of depth how we did the skills audit. I'm not saying to say the way that we did it is the right way but uh, it's definitely um, a way of doing it. <laughs> so, uh, the reason we did this skills audit in the first place is because we we're aware that some members of our team already had some great digital skills. So some were very specific to their role and some were less specific, um, things that they picked up in other jobs or in, in their spare time or what have you. Um, and we realised it's important to first assess what skills we already have in-house before then looking at what skills we didn't have in-house. So the digital audit was carried out by running an online questionnaire and um, SurveyMonkey is our platform of choice for this. We use SurveyMonkey a lot um, when, question uh, when running questionnaires both internally uh, to the staff but also externally to our stakeholders. Uh, so in this case, the, the SurveyMonkey asked all of our staff to rate themselves against a number of digital related skills from things like SEO to, U to UX as well as kind of different platforms um, and tools such as Salesforce and Google Analytics. All in all, um, staff rate, rated themselves against 27 specific items. 
the results came in and we ranked each item, each of those 27 items of either being essential, desirable or unnecessary to our business. And looking at the average scores, we were able to, clear, we were able to see clearly which essential, essential and desirable areas ranked lowest and therefore needed the most attention. Um, the next step really is thinking about the attention that they need, how are we going to how are we going to action against these? So potentially we could go through external training and development, for example, with GDPR. Um, we realise that we don't have necessarily have an expert in-house, and that's something that would benefit all of us and would uh, be very good to get independent advice and training on. Or the attention could be through um, internal best practice sharing. For example, our marketing lead, Lucy, um, could definitely take the lead on educating all of the staff members on digital advertising and SEO in the world. Um, finally, we allocated subject matter experts for each of the 27 areas so that the staff would know who to turn to if they need further support on one specific subject. So the next step for us here is to carry out the necessary internal and external training. So the audit's done, it's the training and development piece which is next. And also, this is important when we're thinking about future recruitment of the organisation and mapping kind of areas of digital knowledge against them. Okay, thank you. Sorry, just, uh, sorry, just having a, a well a PowerPoint issue. I think it's a little bit slower than we are here. Okay. <laughs> Um, so more on culture here, this is all about internal comms and external resources, again making sure that we can get the whole organisation involved, um, getting digital on every team agenda, every company agenda, every um, external touch point as well. So we've encouraged all staff to make use of third sector newsletters and resources. Um, some example here, examples here sorry, are the charity digital news, digileaders.com, Charity Times, looking at the CAS Centre for Charity Effectiveness. And we also encourage attendance um, at key external digital events and training, um, such as I recently went to the Charity, digital, um, the Charity Times Conference, which focused a lot on digital. Um, we've also been to uh, the, uh, Mike, sorry, is going next week to the Charity Digital Conference organised by the Directory of Social Change. And indeed, Gillian has been attending today the National Digital Conference organised by digital leaders. So there's a lot going on, uh, and by going out there and kind of finding out what's happening in the marketplace, we're able to then bring it back internally and further embed it into our culture. Um, so we've got a quick poll. So now we've talked, spoken about digital being part of our team. So a quick short poll for everyone on the webinar is: um, Do you think your workforce is digital ready? So hopefully you can all see um, that question and you have the choice of saying yes, no, or unsure. So we'll give you all a few moments to vote. Okay, well, I'll end it there. I think everyone has, has voted who needs to. So it seems that uh, yes, positively, most people do think that digital work, their workforce is digitally ready, um, but only really by one vote. Uh, and then the other, <laughs> and then no is close behind and then other people who are unsure. So now I'm just going to talk through data and technology. Uh, again, the slides seem to be a little bit slow in our end. There we go. Um, so I'm now going to talk about how we collect and manage data at Pilot Light, um, and what this means for us as an organisation. Um, so really as part of this work, we really thought quite a lot about the kinds of data that we collect. Um, and what it means for us and, and kind of how they all work together. Um, and then um, kind of following on from that, we thought about what are the different technology platforms that we, that we use here at PilotEye, and um, how can we better use them? Um, and also, what are some of the other uh, platforms that we might want to consider um, to, to make kind of our work more efficient, really? Um, so we use uh, Salesforce as our uh, customer relationship management tool um, here at PilotLight, and as I'm sure many of you uh, at your organisations do as well. Um, and I recently came across an article um, that, that talked about um, data management. Uh, it's essential to better understand your beneficiaries and services. Um, yeah, it can be a daunting task, um, which I'm sure uh, many people relate to. Um, and I really kind of agree with, with this statement. Um, I think, particularly when we think about Salesforce here at Pilot Line, um, 
you know, we're always thinking of ways that we can better use it because um, it is incredibly useful for us in terms of um, it's lots of different the, the features that it has and uh, it's kind of means of reporting. Um, but particularly uh, when we think about kind of new people coming into the organisation um, and also just kind of upgrading our, our skills um, as well, kind of the, the people that we work with. Um, it's, it's really important that that kind of ongoing learning and, and training goes on. Um, and again, I, I, something I came across, um, I thought was quite a good way of thinking about, about data, um, was sort of considering the, the following when you think about what data you might want to collect. Um, so it's firstly around funders and external audiences, um, and then around internal reporting um, and service performance management. Um, and then in terms of your staff team and then how um, that kind of impacts on, on the people that you work with. And I think kind of bracketing it in those three ways is, is quite um, a useful way of thinking about it. Um, and as I said, we, we try and, we're trying to build and improve uh, what we have. Um, obviously, when uh, GDPR first came uh, to our attention, it was something that we were sort of thinking about quite a lot. Um, and we're also really keen to, to think about, as I said, the, the training that we incorporate as part of this, because I think it all kind of fits into to, um, the ways that, that we kind of use this data to communicate with people that, that we work with. Um, so then thinking about technology, um, so as I said, uh, I've already covered Salesforce and how we use that. Um, for those of you who know Pilot Lodge, I'm sure most of you do, um, we uh, clearly what we do is running a lot of meetings um, and we're starting to think about okay, how can we um, use remote meetings and what, what's some of the best platforms um, for that. So we use Skype quite a lot and um, Zoom, uh, despite the kind of PowerPoint issues today, seems to be working, seems to work pretty effectively as well. Um, we use SharePoint to uh, collect uh, documentation and share that within our team. Um, and we're, we're really thinking at the moment actually going through this process in terms of um, how we sort of store, manage and collect um, information within that and what's kind of the most um, navigable way um, of using that. It's just <laughs> that's a word I really like. So. <laughs> um, so uh, communications is really is really important. Um, internal comms is something that um, in fact just this week that we were discussing, and even in an organisation you know relatively small like Pilot Light, um, we we use something called Yammer, which might, some of you might have come across, um, which is uh, an internal communications tool um, to to just share, and it, we we kind of use it in a light-hearted way. Um, but it, it can be quite a nice way of kind of generating discussion and ideas in like quite an, an informal way, really. Um, our marketing manager is constantly is at the moment thinking a lot about video um, as part of um, our digital marketing strategy. Um, we won't go too much into that today, but um, I think for those of you who, who keep tabs on our social media, we'll, um, yeah, we'll kind of be aware of some of the different um, Things that we're doing there, um, and then we're also just thinking about the ways that we that we share information uh, with the people that we that we work with, and, and some of the platforms that we use as part of that. We have a members area, um, and we're really we've only kind of recently started um, kind of thinking about how we can make best use of that. Um, so we're kind of continually uh, looking into that as well. So um, now we've got another poll, um, which I'm just going to, Caroline's just going to set up uh, now. Yeah. Um, so the question is, how effectively are you using data technology in your organisation currently? So we'll just wait a couple of moments. But there's a very clear uh, overall score there, I think, of um, 76, 78% mm. somewhat effectively, and only only 20% not effective. That's mm. encouraging. That's encouraging start. But zero for very. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. 
So now that we've gone through some of the kind of deep thinking on the digitalization of pipeline through its culture and through its data and technologies, and once we've done that piece, we felt that we were then ready to kind of get our arms a bit more broadly around how digital fits into pilot light as well. Um, before we do that, I just thought it might be interesting to bring up a couple of um, stats from the Digital Skills Report, which was launched last week by the Skills Platform and in collaboration with Zoe Ma, who is a digital um, champion, I was going to say, in our sector. Um, so 52% of charities polled currently have no digital strategy, but 49% of charities want to use digital to improve their service delivery and 42% want to use digital to increase income. So I think there's definitely a lot of appetite there um, to kind of do this alignment with strategy, but it's not really been done quite yet, I would say. Um, so at Pilot Light, um, as many of you will know, strategic planning is incredibly important to us. We spend a lot of time discussing the strategy of our charity partners, so we do need to make sure that we're <laughs> showing best practice as well. Um, we're currently in the middle of our three years uh, current strategic plan, and that encompasses three elements, which you can see on the left hand side of this slide. So innovating our offer, which is all about finding new ways to support charities and recruiting a diverse mix of, of pilot lighters and the mentors who, who support our partner charities. Increasing our reach, this is all about working with more charities and social enterprises all over the country. Collaborating for impact, this is all about developing strategic alliances with private, public and third set of organisations so that we can develop new ways to support the charity sector. So we wanted to work out how digital can help us make progress in each of these priorities and crucially we wanted to make sure that we had buy-in on this from both the staff and the board level. So we had a, our recent kind of annual away day a few weeks back and we spent time to run a two-hour exercise on that day with the board and the staff working together in three different subgroups, each subgroup exploring one of the three priorities. And as per the box on the right hand side of this slide, um, we set some initial questions to kind of get these conversations started. Um, the exercise was a great success and the teams worked fantastically together to co-create some brilliant ideas and tactics to get digital working hard to meet our priorities. We also used a great tool called Mentimeter to rank all the ideas created so we could see kind of live in the room what the most popular ones were. So of course, uh, the proof of the pudding and all that, um, execution is key here, so our next step is to make sure that we work on these priorities item, prioritised items sorry, and come up with action plans to deliver against each of them, with the whole staff team and also the board contributing to that as well. So um, if we just go on to our final poll of the day, which is relating to strategy, so I'll just let Mike bring you to that. Perfect. So the question here is, have you already discussed embedding digital into your strategy? Yes, no, or unsure? So I'll give you a few seconds. So, positively, it seems like, yes, those discussions have, have been uh, started off already. Uh, we obviously, a follow-up question would be interesting to know is, is it actually embedded or are you know, at the discussion stage? But I think definitely by starting off with discussions, that's the right, <laughs> the right first step and really useful and certainly something that's working for us here at Quietlight. So, for our, our final kind of piece of content before we go to questions, uh, right, so some um, top tips um, when you're getting started with digital. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned, I think, uh, yet is the Charity Digital Code of Governance. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is quite important for the sector and uh, particularly the seven principles, which are very brief, fit on one page, uh, and are really handy to, for instance, um, use with your board to socialise the idea of digital and what you might be doing with it, and even as a checklist in terms of thinking about your planning. Uh, another tip is don't try to do everything at once. <laughs> um, maybe use the code indeed as the basis for a plan, but um, I think for some of the smaller organisations I've come across, it all feels a little bit overwhelming times. Um, if you can, form a digital working group. Getting different perspectives and dividing up next steps helps a lot. 
as does the opportunity to engage different stakeholder viewpoints and experiences. Don't be put off if you don't currently have funds to invest in digital. It's a mindset and it's important to clarify first what it means for your mission. There are a lot of free forums and resources out there too, as Caroline was mentioning earlier. Uh, and finally, I'd say do start in however small a way if you haven't already. Digital is an opportunity not to be missed, even though it often seems like a challenge. Great, thanks Julian. So, um, we have um, some questions coming. We've got about seven minutes left to broadcasting. Um, so, I'm so should we start off um, with the first question that we've had come in? Uh, does it matter if the leader of my organisation doesn't have digital skills? Okay. Uh, I'll say that. <laughs> um, my answer to that is uh, absolutely not. And I go back to the point I was making just now, which is it's a mindset. So I'm not saying that digital skills are not important, and we've discussed how we might think about um, bringing those into the organisation, but um, it's uh, having the imagination really to, to look to the future and to see what opportunities are out there as leaders should be doing with any uh, other area of the field. Great. Um, so, next question we have from Amy. Thanks, Amy. Um, if there is no possibility that you can spend money on digital, uh, at least in the short term, how can you progress any of this? Uh, I'll just jump in there for, for mm -hmm. a moment, um, which is a uh, slightly broken record, but I'm um, reiterating the mindset thing. You know, we've talked a bit about um, digital, for, uh, sorry, a bit about culture today. So I think those discussions, those conversations with internal and external stakeholders are hugely important for the, um, the planning piece and the focus on what is it we're actually going, sometimes it's even better to focus more on what are we actually trying to achieve with digital rather than um, jumping to invest in either training or um, technology itself. And uh, we've also mentioned many of the free resources that are available uh, in many forms, both face-to-face um, -face and certainly on the web at the moment. And, I, and just to kind of sort of expand on that bit as well, I'd also say, as I mentioned in the skill, digital skills audit piece, um, just check first of all internally because it might be that people that you're working with might have some great skills or have access to, I don't know, free software or have used free online tools that um, that will be useful. So do check what you what you actually have at your at your remit already. Great, thanks. Um, so we'll jump to Helen's question. Um, what is the definition of digital skills? Um, I think when we talk about it in this context, I think it's a lot about um, the kind of awareness piece. So it's not necessarily practically speaking, um, you know, kind of knowing exactly what to do with, with the technology. It's knowing kind of what's out there um, and kind of having that understanding of what sort of would be useful for your organization and maybe what and, and what's kind of worth investing in and, and what isn't so much. And so I think particularly when we think about it in this context, um, and certainly kind of why we thought about running this session today and um, when we talk about digital skills and um, I certainly think that it's that kind of awareness piece, I don't know if you, I don't know if you I mean I think this, the, the, the role, there are experts, you know, it's going to be experts mm -hmm. in certain specific digital things but I guess answering the first point as well about the first question about does it matter for leaders and have digital skills we're not expecting or we don't imagine, no one is an expert at everything despite what my husband might think and um, so you know it's important that as as a leader that you're aware of the potential out there i assume rather than necessarily all the different aspects um so the next question uh, how do i get my trustees on board with digital yeah, I think that's the idea. <laughs> well, I think it's the, um, you know, it's kind of back to the culture piece and, and the sharing and uh, the strategy and issue because, um, you know, many boards, as we're aware, 
uh, might have some resistance to this or might not themselves be necessarily digitally skilled or even uh, digitally aware. So I certainly found um, the seven principles in the digital code a very good way to say there's now a code of governance uh, in this area. These are the seven principles. It's something that we need to have on the board agenda for discussion, um, if not at every meeting, at least uh, two or three times a year. So again, it's the first steps getting started. And um, I don't know if we mentioned, we uh, got our trustees to set up a WhatsApp group uh, among themselves <laughs> to communicate and share information in between meetings. And uh, yeah, small steps. So next question, uh, what do you feel the main barriers to embedding a digital culture in an organisation are and how do you overcome that? I mean, I, I think kind of just speaking from our experience, just getting started is kind of a, a barrier in itself and, and kind of trying to keep that momentum going, you know, when everyone's busy um, and there's a certain way of doing things that you've had maybe for a, a, a kind of a, a length of time, um, but just really kind of keeping things moving, which... Uh, I think it'd be fair to say it was a challenge for us yeah. um, and probably still is, but... Um, it involved lots of people, talk about it all the time, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't let it become something at the bottom of your to-do list, yeah. Talk about it all the time. Yeah. Um, we've only got one minute left, so it's just an interesting question yeah. at the end. Yeah. Um, so uh, someone said, I have discussed developing a digital strategy with our director, but we don't have an organisational strategy to align with and nobody seems keen to produce one. How can I begin to embed, embed digital without a strategy? Well, I mean, I would say there that, um, you know, digital strategy, again, it was a word in a way, because um, a recent uh, forum I was at said, we simply won't even talk about that. It would just be so embedded, it would be part of our working days. In, in this case, I would say, uh, your organization will have a mission statement or, you know, will understand at some level what it is they're trying to achieve. So it's looking at those things and simply thinking uh, digitally about how you can better achieve those um, objectives. It's clearer, I imagine, in organizations where there's, a, for instance, a fundraising or some direct uh, involvement where you know, it, it's more obvious, let's say, where you might be able to use a digital platform more usefully to um, engage with your stakeholders. Great, so uh, we are out of time. Um, thank you very much um, for those of you um, who asked us some questions. It was great to have those, and in fact, there's a couple we didn't get to. Um, this webinar has been recorded, and we will send around a link to the recording to all the attendees in case you'd like to call it on to any colleagues or friends or family. Um, so thank you very much for the viewing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful Leaders Week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>